चलिए सो लेट स्टार्ट रियल नंबर एंड लॉट्स यू नो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ रियल नंबर हैज बीन रिमूव फ्रॉम योर करिकुलम सो दैट सैड एंड दिस इज द फाइनल टाइम आई एम जस्ट रिविजिंग रिविजिटिंग दिस सो यू नो वेर इज रियल नंबर सिस्टम सिक्स मार्क्स सो यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट सिक्स मार्क्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम रियल नंबर राइट बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली दिस हैज बीन रिमूव Euclid's division lemma is removed, but without that, this is the you know the most basic concept in your grade ten. But without that, I I don't know. Um, so the other topics which are left or which is which are there in this top in this chapter is uh, fundamental. Uh, uh, what is that? Fundamental law of arithmetic and uh, theorem of arithmetic. Sorry and. Uh, HCF, LCM, and then rational, irrational numbers, and things like that. Okay, so uh, while picking up the questions, I have picked only those where Euclid's division lemma is not involved. So hence, you will not be getting uh, questions like uh, prove that um, square of a prime number is of this form, or sum of, or product of three consecutive. a uh, positive number is always divisible by 6 all these type of questions will not be there okay so uh, easy easy topic it is very you know scoring you can get 6 marks very easily with very less effort so we have done this so many times so i'm not going to go back on to this so uh, there are 6 marks for this so usually two one marker one uh, uh one two marker and one three marker something one uh, sorry one into one mark so this could be the Yeah, P is right now. So hence, it, this could be the configuration. So one into one mark. Okay, so this is one. Then uh, one into two mark, maybe uh, one into three mark. Either this form, or since it is six mark, so hence uh, two into one mark. And uh, there is no four marker here. So uh, in the in the your board exam, so hence there will not be any four marker. So either a five marker then, which is unlikely. So one into five marker and one into one marker. So these could be possibilities, but in most likelihood, I think this is going to be the scenario. Okay, or another one could be one into one and two into two, both. Anyway, so Euclid's division lemma is very basic. You know this, uh, though it is removed, but still I have. you know um included this while in discussion because this is most basic yeah how do how can you not study euclid's division lemma so which says that given positive integers a and b there exist whole number q and r satisfying a is equal to b q plus r which is uh, the more sophisticated form of writing dividend is equal to that what you have seen dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus the remainder right so this is what um uh, is a basic uh, thing and the remainder here is always less than the divisor it has to be so that's what you already know and this is formally written or it was never told to you that it is called euclid's division lemma until until now and uh, very basic so no issues anyways uh so next is there is an algorithm to find out hcf so the long division method of finding hcf you all know now this is not there but finding hcf lcm and all that might be there so hence you must know how to find out hcf uh, so you don't need to deploy euclid's division algorithm where a repeated division uh, is done but uh, let's say the question says that find the hcf of these two numbers and they will not say uh, which algorithm or which process to adopt then you can always use this division algorithm though it is also i am believing it's not there so those people who wrote the pre board in the in the month of uh, december so did you guys see any question related with euclid's division algorithm because the the notification says only uh, lemma is not there so hence mostly division algorithm is also not there because it's directly linked to the lemma so anyway so we'll just uh, move forward okay so and the game starts with the fundamental theorem of arithmetic which says that the fundamental theorem of arithmetic every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique 
except for the order in which the prime factors occur. So this is again very intuitive. We know that it's now formally, uh, you know, uh, introduced to you as a fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which is very very true. So any composite number, let's say ten, can always be expressed as two to the power one into five to the power one. So there are two aspects to it. One is this representation is unique. That means you cannot have any other prime factor apart from whatever we just found out by factorization. So that's unique, and uh, order could be anything. So you can write this as five into two to the power one. Also, that's fine. That's not a problem. But you cannot have any introduction of any third uh, Aryan single. I thought algorithm was not there, but lemma was there. So this is what their official document says. Real numbers deleted portion Euclid's division lemma. Do check it on CBSE's site. Okay. So this is. There, from there, okay. So, are you getting questions on lemma, Arin? In your, well, anyways, if you get also, you know how to solve. But uh, the formal syllabus starts from here, which is fundamental theorem of arithmetic and lots of application. Is it okay? So, this is what it says. So, for example, another example. Let's take twenty-four. So, twenty-four you can factorize as uh, four into six or eight into three. So that is two to the power three into three to the power one. Now, this is again. Uh, unique, so you cannot have any other any other representation but this, right? So this is what uh, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says. Okay, fair enough. Now, uh, and this is done. Every composite number can be uniquely a product of powers of primes in ascending or descending order. So in another way, you can write like that. So every composite number. So see, it is talking about every com composite number. For that matter, any number, any positive. integer can be expressed uniquely as product of prime numbers including prime numbers themselves so for example um you know uh, so if you you if you don't count 1 so hence 23 also can be written as you know 23 itself so there is no product required here so 23 is simply this but yes doesn't make sense for any prime number why because there is no product here Okay, so hence we say for every other composite number, so twenty-five is you have to have five into five or five square. Okay, so this is unique. Okay, this is unique. Okay, fair enough. So next, we have we will be having lots of application of FTA. Okay, so this is the first one. Let a be a positive integer and p be a prime number such that p divides a square and then hence p divides a. Okay. So what it means is, if p divides, so uh, and where are we going to use this? So you know that there will be one class of questions where you will have to prove that, prove that uh, root of five is a prime number. Oh, sorry, not a prime number. Is a is an irrational number. Is an irrational number. This is a question. It was asked last year also. Last to last year also. Every year one question typical. This question comes. Prove that root five is an irrational number, and uh, this particular theorem is used here. Which one? That is p. If a be a positive integer, let's say a is twenty-five. Okay, so let a be a positive integer. So what is positive integer? Let's say a is. Uh, Uh, let a be a positive integer and p be a prime number such so that p divides a square. So, uh, which one should I take? Let's say p divides a square. No. So let's say three and thirty-six. Um, yeah. So let's say a is equal to thirty-six. Okay. If a is equal to thirty-six and let's say p is equal to three, so you can see that p divides. Um, or rather, let's take a as six. Yeah, so that will make it easier. So p divides six square definitely. P divides six square. Now, when p divides six square, p also divides six. So that is what they are saying, right? And you have to prove this. You have to prove. Prove. Can Can anyone suggest how to prove that that a be a positive integer and p be a prime number such that p divides a square, then p divides a. So you'll use use FTA here. Is it? What uh, will we use? FTA. How to how to deploy FTA? So basically, let us say a. Let us say a. A can be expressed as a, a is a composite number, so it can be expressed as p1 to the power m 
one into p two to the power m two into p three to the power m three into dot 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 p n to the power m n. Right. So this is the expression for let's say the composite number by FTA. Right now, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. This is what I can say. So what will be a square, guys? So a square clearly will be p one two m one. So every everything will just get multiplied. Every every m one m two m i will get multiplied by two, right? And this is p three two m three, so on and so forth. P n two m n, correct? So when I raise it to a power of uh, uh, right two, right? Now if if so, it is said that p divides a p divides a square. That means what can I say? P is one of one of P one, P two, P three, dot 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 P n. It has to be there is no other prime factor, so hence P has to be one of P is one of P one, P two, P three, P n. Because in the in the factorization of a square, we see only these n prime numbers are involved. So hence, if p divides a square and p itself is a prime, that means p is one of p one, p two, p three, p n. Let us say p is equal to p k for some for some k which is less than n. Okay, and it is always greater than or equal to one. So either so it could be p one, p two, p three, p four, p five, p ten, whatever p some p k. Okay, not the movie p k. So p subscript k. So far, so good. Are you getting it? So, if P K is one of one of the prime numbers, okay. Now, clearly, P K divides what P one to the power two m one into P two to the power two m two into so on and so forth. There will be a P K here, one of the prime numbers, and I am writing at two m K into dot 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 P n. 2m n, isn't it? I can say that, right? So p k is somewhere here. Here, so there will be p, yeah. So p k is this here somewhere. So clearly, you can see that uh, you can write this as p divides. So you can write this as um, p one to the power m one into P two to the power m two, so on and so forth, and then here P n to the power m n, and multiply it by the same thing. P one, m one, P two. So there will be a P k here, okay, like that. M two, and this is m k. Similarly, P k here. So you can clearly see that P k is one of the factors. Is it? I'm not writing the full statement, so you can clearly see that P K, right? P K is here also, and this is nothing but A. Okay, so clearly P K divides A, or P K divides P divides A. That is what you needed to prove. P divides A, right? So P was P K, so P K divides A, so P A divides A. Clear. So hence, this particular thing is going to be used for proving what type of questions? This one. Prove that root five is an irrational number. You can always state this theorem to prove it. Okay. So there will be one question for sure on this type of this thing. There are infinitely many positive primes. This is another another theorem to prove. Can anyone try proving this? Infinitely many prime and. This has been there since centuries. This particular theorem or concept that there are infinitely many prime, positive primes since you know more than two thousand years ago. In fact, two thousand five years ago, people were aware that there are infinitely many positive primes. Okay, so how do we prove that? So again, uh, very very simple and again application of we will apply FTA here also application of FTA. What do we do? So let us say, uh, you know, and and uh, the other technique which we are going to use is called contradiction method. So we will assume with let us say, let us assume there are 
assume that there are finite number of primes finite number of primes the moment you say that then obviously you will have the largest prime number and uh, let us say pn is the largest prime number largest why n because we are assuming that there are n prime numbers in total so let us say pn is the largest prime number so there are n prime numbers without any doubt n prime numbers so in subscript n this subscript here this means there are there are we are assuming there are n prime numbers only n is a finite number so n prime numbers very good n prime numbers okay so let us now design a, a new number so let us say we are saying a is equal to p1 into p2 into p3 into dot 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 pn we are designing a number which is product of all the first or all the n prime numbers okay now let us say q is equal to a plus 1 okay a plus 1 then what will this be this will be p1 plus p2 plus sorry not plus into my bad so p1 into p2 into dot 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 into pn plus 1 so i'm just adding plus 1 to it okay now if you see clearly if p1 divides a then p1 will not divide a plus 1 right so this if p1 divides a p1 will not divide a plus 1 right no so two consecutive numbers are never divisible by same prime number uh so hence p1 if p1 divides a p1 will not divide a plus 1 so if p2 divides a which is given anyways i know then p2 cannot divide a plus 1 why because hence the lemma will again be used here because if you divide this a by any one of p1 p2 p3 n n always you will get a remainder 0 and if you are dividing q by any one of p1 p2 and all you will always get a remainder 1 right and 1 uh, is lesser than the smallest prime number so hence these all will be true so p3 divides a then p3 doesn't divide a plus 1 likewise you can carry on this process and say if pn divides a then pn is not going to divide a plus 1 that means none of none of p1 p2 dot dot pn divides divides q right that means q doesn't have prime factors prime factors that means q itself is a prime then q is a prime q is a prime number but but q is greater than p p1 or you can write q is greater than a which itself is greater than pn right why it is a is greater than pn because a was equal to p1 times p2 p3 times pn and all that so hence a is definitely greater than pn so you are saying that means q is a prime number prime number greater than greater than pn greater than pn but how is this possible right so you had assumed pn to be the largest that means this means pn is not the largest or greatest prime number now this prime number i mean that is so so hence we meet a contradiction hence hence it contradicts contradicts our initial assumption assumption that there are finite prime numbers
Okay, hence proved, understood all of you. So this is the proof for there are infinitely many positive prime numbers. Okay, so you design a new number, which is product of all the prime numbers and add one, prove that none of the prime fact, uh, prime numbers divide that a cube, uh, a plus one, and hence there are infinite, infinitely many prime numbers. So far so good guys, yes. Bolo, all of you, okay, any questions so far? So maybe they can ask, but I have not seen these kind of questions there in the board, but good mental exercise. Chalo. So this is an important result for two positive integers, a and, a and B, A cross B, that is my product of A and B is always equal to HCF of AB and LCM of AB, right? This is the one marker questions are sure shot. So one, there are several sets, right, in the board paper. One set or a couple of sets will definitely have one marker, which has this particular uh, concept in use. So what I'm saying is HCF into LCM is equal to AB. So they will give you two numbers, one number, one LCM will be given, find HCF, vice versa, like that. Okay, so this is, we will see the use of this theorem later in the questions. Okay, now another thing is, uh, the other, other type of questions will be, if P is a positive number, prime, then root P is an irrational number, for example, root two, root three, root five, root seven, root 11, are all irrational numbers. That is what we are also going to, See, and again, as I told you, one question typically related to this is also there. We will see when we are dealing with the problems. Okay, now this is another one marker types. So let X be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. Okay, then X can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are co-prime. And the prime factorization of Q is of the form two to the power M into five to the power N, where M and N are non-negative integers. So what does it mean? So this is again, very intuitive. We have seen this multiple number of times. So let us say, let us take some decimal which terminates. So first is let's say 0 0.025, 0 0.25. This is a terminating decimal. So this is a terminating terminating decimal. How do you represent this in form of P by Q? You have done this in ninth grade. So what is 0.25 as a P by Q form? What will you write 0.25 as? In the P by Q form, what is 0.25? Hello? Are you there? Guys, 0.25 is how much? How much should I write? Anyone? 0.25 is how much? All right. No one is responding. Guys, you're there. Hello? Folks, yes, slow, slow response, slow response. What is 2.25? Only two people are there. Everyone else is watching India Australia match. Is there some match going on? No. Is there any match going on? No match. Then where are people? Hello, people. Can you respond please? 0.25 is how much? Or it is too lesser a question to be solved here. Anyways, so 0.25 is one upon four. All of you know. And one upon four can be written as one upon two square. Okay. And this can be written as one upon two square into five to the power zero. Right. So hence any decimal, which is terminating can be expressed like that. And uh, another example could be, let's say 0 0.3125. What is this 3125? Can anyone tell me what is this 0 0.3125? How do I convert it? How much is this? one upon something. How much is 3125? No one is participating. Hello, people, are you there? Are you? There are 30 people here. They should be responding. Hello, Aditi, Aidan, Akshit, Alisha, Ananya, Niket, Gupta, Nirud, Sai, Anish, Bharadwaj, Janushka, Arjun, Aryan, Aryan Singhal, Devjit, DECC1216. Now, who's this? Disha, Prashant, uh, Gnanesh, Jennifer, um, Kiran Mai, Gautam, Monish, Naomi, Rakshit. Are, where are you guys? Hello? Ralph, Ria, Anne, Sharduli, Shreya, Surya, Taman, Tavishi, Aditya Kumar, Anil. What is the response? What is the answer for this? 0.3125. Please convert. Please convert it into uh, B by Q form. So Sharduli is saying 25 by 8. Ayyo, how come? 25 by 8.3125, Shardulli. Uh, 5 upon 16. Do it and tell me all of you. Is it 5 upon 16?
is it hmm 5116 okay so this should be very very easy to calculate yaar 3 1 2 5 pe 1 pe 1 shunya 3 4 like that is it now it goes by 25 for sure yes so how do you do this this is 25 1 then 62 so 24 2 then 1.25 divided by 25 400 okay so again it is 5 upon 16 Five upon sixteen, right? Which can be written again as five upon two to the power four into five to the power zero, isn't it? So this is going to be our terminating decimal, right? Similarly, if I have let's say one upon eighty, so one upon eighty, will this have decimal representation which is terminating or not? Terminating or not? Will this be having terminating decimal representation? Tell me quick. One upon eighty, terminating or not? Let's say A. Choose between these. So one upon let's say six hmm, forty. C is one upon one twenty. D is one upon um three seventy five. Which one? Which one of these are terminating? A, B, C, D. Me se, kon kon se? Who? Which all? Terminating decimal. This is correct. A is correct. A is terminating. Yes. What about B? Is B terminating? One upon six forty. Is B terminating decimal? Representation. Come on, folks. Respond. All of you. But where is energy level? How will you get centum? Hello, guys. Yes or no? B is. B is terminating or not? Only three people: Shreyas, Arjun, Sharduli, Devjit. Okay, so Aryan has done all. Yes, this is terminating. This is non-terminating because there is a three here. This is also non-terminating. Okay, why? So this is what what we are learning. So hence, if the denominator of the form two to the power m into five to the power n. Then it is going to be terminating, and why it is going is going to be terminating is very very easy. You can you can see. So let us say you have p by q. Any let's now prove it also. So p by q is there, and let's say q is equal to two to the power m into five to the power n. Okay, and so hence what is this number? So this number will become p upon two to the power m into two to the power n. Simple. So what do we do in this case? Then let us say case one. One, if m is greater than n, if m is greater than n, so what do I do? I do this. So I will multiply p two to the power m into two to the power n into two to the power m minus n. This is what I am going to do. Okay, and top maybe you multiply two to the power m minus n. This this process I can do without any doubt, any problem because I can multiply. And divide by the same number, the fraction doesn't change. But why did I do that? If you see, this becomes p into two to the power m minus n divided by what will this be in the in the denominator? Oh, sorry, I have to take five, not two here. My bad, my bad, my bad. Here it is five, five, five. So five, all are five. Just change five, five, five. Okay. Now two to the power five. Two to the power m, sorry, and five to the power this one. Adding, you will get five to the power m also. This one is also five. This one is five, right? Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, this is this, and then what will this be? So this is uh, p into five to the power m minus n, and let's say this will be ten to the power m. Now anything divided by ten power of ten will always lead to a terminal decimal number, is it? So this will lead to terminal terminal decimal representation without doubt. Why? Because you are dividing by a multiple of ten, right? This is case one. What if case case two? Case two is m is equal to n. So if m m is equal to n, the number is p upon two to the power m. Into five to the power m only. Okay, so clearly here there is no 
big deal 10 to the power m which is again a terminal decimal terminating 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 decimal representation third case could be m is less than m then what will happen then you will write p upon 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n into now you will multiply by 2 to the power n minus m okay multiply divide by this so what will happen again you will see this is reduced to p into 2 to the power n minus m divided by again you will see 2 to the power n into 5 to the power n right so hence you will get p into 2 to the power n minus m by 10 to the power n isn't it so this is how you will get uh, all the three forms all the three three cases you will get did you all understand guys hello dosto yes or no is that fine is that fine with all okay so this is the basic proof so you can also predict how many can you predict how many um decimal points will be there after the point here in case of let's say this first case how many after how many digits will it terminate can you predict after how many digits will it terminate m the larger of the two the larger of the two is it so if it if n is more than n if if m is more than m right so hence let's say if you have uh, a 3769 divided by 2 to the power 21 into 5 to the power 25 how many digits after decimal will be there in the expression yes so there will be 25 25 digits after which it will terminate correct yes or no all clear similarly so you can this there will be one marker questions like this so they will give you number of decimal digits after the decimal in this kind of an expression so one two three five one two nine divided by 2 to the power 2021 into 2 to the power 2022 sorry 5 to the power so how many how many will be there so many people will get confused and they will be like oh my god such a big number and uh, how to find out difficult but the answer is simply 2022 right so hence simple okay good so leading to this so another uh, corollary you can say is p by q be a rational number such that the prime factorization of q is of the form this where m and n are non-negative integer that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all positive numbers as well. Then x has a terminating decimal expansion which terminates after k places of decimal where k is the larger of m and n. This is what is written in statement. Okay. Now let x is equal to p by q be a rational number such that the prime factorization of q is not of the form, not, nahi hai. Then x has non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. So any other factor, even let's say if 3 is included or 7 is included or 11 is included, anything but 2 and 5 is there, that means it is not going to terminate. So 1 upon 3, classic example, 0 0.3333, isn't it? So it is not going to terminate because there is no 2 nor 5, right? So presence of this, even this is non-terminating. Even this is non-terminating. So even if one of 2 or 5 is there, but the other one is not you know, 2 or 5, but some other prime number, then these are all non-terminating. But since they are rational numbers, so they will have repeating. 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 Fair enough. Okay, so we'll see some questions. Typically, one markers are asked. Okay, here is the first question. Here is the first question. If xy is 180, hcf of xy is 3, then find the lcm. So these are one marker, right? So all of you should be able to do what is the concept? Underlying concept is hcm into lcm is equal to a into b all right so ab or xy is given 180 and hcf is given 3 
थ्री इंटू एल सी एम कैन यू प्रिडिक्ट टू नंबर सच टू नंबर एक्स एंड वाई बोलो एल सी एम इज सिक्सटी एंड एनी वन कैन यू प्रोडिक्ट एनी नंबर सिक्स एंड नाइन बट सिक्स इंटू नाइन इज नॉट वन एटी द प्रोडक्ट इज वन एटी गेटिंग माई पॉइंट थ्री एंड ट्वेंटी हाउ अगेन थ्री एंड ट्वेंटी के नॉट बी वन एटी सो इट हेज द प्रोडक्ट हेज टू बी वन एटी नो Is it? Thirty and six, correct? Or which? Only thirty and six, or is there anything else? Fifteen and twelve? Yeah, like that. So there could be, है ना? Very good. So good. Next, next question. decimal representation of this will terminate after how many decimal places do people so don't get intimidated by the numerator which is there 1 4 5 8 you don't need to actually start uh dividing so what is the answer decimal representation of this will terminate after how many decimal four places without any doubt so you have to basically so the question is this that 1 4 5 8 7 One four five eight seven divided by two to the power one into five to the power four. So after how many places it will terminate? So whichever is larger between one and four. So four is the answer. Perfect. One mark done. This is a sample paper question. Next one. This. Ah, uh, so there are questions like this also. Three bells ring at an interval of four, seven, and fourteen minutes. All three bell rang at six a.m. When the three bells will the ring? What? When? What? When the three bell balls will the ring together next? Oh, there is some. This is a sample paper issue. So this will be bells. And there is some drafting issue. When the three bells will the ring together next? Yes. Six twenty-eight a.m. is the correct answer. Yep. So. What do you need to do? The underlying concept is you have to find out the LCM, LCM of four, seven, and fourteen is clearly twenty-eight. I I hope you all know the methods of. Do you all know how to find out LCM, guys? Four, seven, fourteen. All of you know, right? So there are multiple methods of doing. So I I go by fundamental. Theorem of arithmetic. So four is two square. So prime factorize everything. So seven is seven into one, and then fourteen can be written as two to the power one into seven to the power one, and then LCM is nothing but how many different types of prime factors do you see? So one is two and one is seven. Only two factors are there, and write the highest factor, uh, highest of all of them. So in this, this is the highest. So two, and in seven, the highest power is one. So answer is twenty eight. Okay, so hence, all right. So hence, LCM is this. So six a.m. six plus six a.m. plus twenty-eight minutes is nothing but six twenty-eight a.m. So at six twenty-eight a.m., all of them will ring together. Very good. So you'll get two marks for this. So four marks for this paper done. This is another. Prove that two minus root three is irrational. Given that root three is irrational. Given that, so this is important. They have already given that root three is given. So how to do such questions? You now know. So what to do? Question number four. So here, what you will do is, given that root three is an irrational number, irrational. So you don't need to prove it separately. Irrational number. Square it, huh? So hence, no. So hence, in such questions, you say uh, contradiction method. So we have to prove, to prove, to prove, two minus root three is uh, also is an irrational number. Irrational number. 
fair enough this is we have to prove so what how do we say we say let us say let us assume let us assume a or x is equal to 2 minus root 3 is a rational number let us assume x is equal to 2 minus root 3 is a rational number so assumptions we will and we will contradict it that means x is equal to 2 minus root 3 fair enough that means you can say uh, root 3 root 3 is equal to 2 minus x yes or no root 3 is 2 minus x now this is good enough for proving good enough so here is proof ends why because lhs is equal to an irrational number right root 3 is in an irrational number given but rhs is equal to 2 minus x is equal to a rational difference of difference of two rational numbers right because 2 and x both are rational numbers we have assumed x to be rational therefore is equal to a rational number but how can an irrational number be equal to an rational number so an irrational number irrational number can't be equal to a rational number rational number hence hence what will it impact it will impact our assumption hence the assumption the assumption that x is rational is wrong is contradicted contradicted therefore x is equal to 2 minus root 3 is an irrational number okay so you have to write all of this to get three months okay so in ncrt like very similar but instead of taking it as x they've said uh, since to let 2 minus root 3 be a rational number and that means 2 minus root 3 is equal to p by q where p and q are integers and then they've proved it using the similar method ah, no problem so you can see basically uh, you can do that Eight minute. Oh, yeah. Eight minute, dosto. just a minute huh? uh... Hello? Yes, guys, can you hear me? Hello? Hanji, dosto. Okay, chalo. So, uh, where were we? Hanji, yes, sorry. Um, Aryan, you were saying something? I did I complete my discussion there? So you are saying yes. So what Aryan is saying is p by q. So let this be p by q is equal to 2 minus root 3. That's what you're saying, right? So here you can say that p by q or 2 minus p by q is equal to root 3. That means uh 2 q minus p by q is equal to root 3 which is again you will say that this is a rational number again you will have to prove this you will prove that this is a rational in the left hand side irrational in the right hand side so hence again same thing right this is what you meant right rm when you said that yeah okay so yes you can do that as well but whichever logic 
you think so i i think uh, since root 3 was given directly so hence i assume let us assume that x equals to 2 minus root 3 is a rational number so x is equal to 2 minus root 3 so root 3 is equal to 2 minus x we are assuming the same, we are adopting the same concept that uh, so i am assuming the concept that rational number difference is a rational number here in this case you will say integer by integer is a rational number so adopt this method if ncrt suggests this okay so let me let us solve a similar question right in this method okay chali total number of factors of a prime number is total number of factors of a prime number is total number of factors of a prime number is so two right so two factors are there total number of factors are number one and ha so be careful you know easy questions can be tempting okay next now hcf and lcm of 12 21 15 respectively are so here is the question where you have to find out hcf and lcm both right so 12 can be written as 2 square into 3 to the power 1 21 can be written as 3 to the power 1 into 7 to the power 1 and 15 can be written as 3 to the power 1 into 5 to the power 1. Is it? Bolo dosto. So hence HCF. HCF me kya karte hai? Write all the factors which you see. So 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 but put the lowest of all power. So lowest of all. So lowest isme, isme lowest kitna hai? 2 ka lowest is 0. Why? Because here is 2 to the power 0. Here is 2 to the power 0. What is lowest of 3? 1. What is lowest of 5? 0. What is lowest of 7? 0. Why? Because here it is 5 to the power 0. Here it is 7 to the power 0. So everywhere you fill it. So it will make sense. Right? So hence the this thing is 3. What is LCM? Write all the same factors. 2 into 3 into 5 into 7. But now this time put the highest one. So highest of 2 is 2. Highest of 3 is 1. Highest of 5 is 1. Highest of 7 is 1. Isn't it? So hence whatever it is. So 2, 4, 3, 12, 60, 7, 4, 20. So the answer is 3 and 4, 20. That is C. Okay. Perfect. So. Okay. The sum of exponents of prime factors in the prime factorization of 196 is. So this is again based on FTA. So sum of exponents of prime factors in the prime factorization of 196. So 196 is 2 times. So you have to do like this. This is your typical method. 2 into 98. 2 into 49. And this is 7 into 7. So hence 196 is equal to 2 square into 7 square. So what is the answer? 2 plus 2, 4. Right? So exponents you have to add. So answer is 4. Okay, next. Prove that root 5 is an irrational number. Every alternate year this question comes. Either it will be root 5, root 7, root 2, root 3, something like that. Prove that root 5 is an irrational number. So what will you do? So again, here is what we had discussed and we are going to use that part. What will you say? So, so we'll see uh, question. So prove that root five is an irrational number, irrational number. That means it's decimal representation will be non terminating, non repeating, but how do we prove that? So we do again by contradiction method. So we'll say, let us say, let us assume root 5 to be a rational number. We can do that. We can start with this assumption. So where p by q is equal to root 5, you say where p and q are co-primes. Co-primes. That is, there is no common factor between p and q. p and co-prime integers. And you say co prime series integers only, but co prime integers where q is not equal to zero. So, all the definition of rational number you have to 
right over there dash dev yeah just a minute someone is constantly dropping off then joining devashish are you there can you hear me devashish yes sir what what's happening with you so uh, there are if there is only one devashish or there are multiple devashish because i'm seeing someone is joining dropping joining dropping joining what is happening is the, is the internet connection stable there is some issue are you the same devashish or some other devashish is there just uh, so because i can see constant you know uh, so someone is attempting but you are not able to join properly i believe anyway so now p by q is root 5 where p and q are so what do we do now so we say that p is equal to root 5 q okay so p square will be equal to 5 q square that means you will say what will you say 5 divides p square correct now when 5 divides p square then 5 divides p you remember we proved this that if a prime number divides a square if a prime number divides a square it divides a as well we proved above Is it so? Why we divide p? So that means I can write p is equal to five times m for some for some positive integer, positive integer m, right? Because five divides p, so p is five times some number m. Now, uh, so now come again. So p by q was equal to root five. okay and or you can start from here only so you can just mention this number so let us say 1 and let us say 2 like that and then you say from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 what can i say i can say 5m whole square is equal to 5q square this means 25 m square is going to be equal to 5 q square that means q square is equal to 5 m square this means 5 divides q square and 5 divides q correct therefore p and q both have a common factor common factor what common factor is this 5 but boss you said that they are co primes you started with that they are co primes how can co primes i hope you understand what co what a co prime number what a pair of co prime number is co prime numbers are those numbers which has only one common factor that is 1 okay there is no other common factor apart from 1 so hence they are you know so they cannot have five as a common factor then so then you know it contradicts our statement or it contradicts it contradicts the assumption what was the assumption guys the assumption was it contradicts the assumption that root 5 sorry assumption that p and q are co primes hence hence um root 5 root 5 is not a rational number therefore root 5 is a uh, an irrational number theek hai ji this is how you have to do it uh sir is there a pair of co primes which are independently composite yes 9 and 10 every adjacent two adjacent uh numbers are always two consecutive numbers are always co primes is it dekho 9 and 10 both are composite but they are co primes is it similarly 14 and 15 Co-prime. Similarly, fifteen and sixteen. 
co prime similarly 20 and 21 co prime so all are okay ji chaliye so so two consecutive numbers are always co prime haan ji now this is done very good ha ye bataiye hcf of 135 and 225 oh chunnu unnu question chunnu unnu answer is one marker in 1920 board so the board exams will be so predictable you will make mistakes because you are bored <laughs> that's the only out of boredom you will make mistake pata what is the answer dost so 135 either you can prefer long division method so 135 aisa kar lo aisa kar lo 225 idhar likh lo so it is 1 135 and uh, idhar kya bach gaya 90 इधर फिर ऐसा कर लो 135 लिखो दिस इज द यूक्लिड्स डिवीजन एल्गोरिथम 91 90 45 एंड 90 सो द लास्ट डिवाइजर इज द एचसीएफ ओके दिस इज बाय यूक्लिड्स डिवीजन एल्गोरिथम सो आई हैव नॉट रिटन इन द Typical form. The long division method is nothing but division algorithm. Otherwise, you could have done this. One thirty-five is equal to fifteen into nine. So, 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 twenty-seven and five. So five into ha. Huh, so two three to the power three into five to the power one. Two twenty-five is uh, five square into three square. Is it? So now HCF. How to write HCF, guys? HCF के लिए आप how many factors you see all the factors write up, write them down. So three into five, like that. And the lowest powers among all. So out of three का power three and two the lowest is two. So write two. Out of one and two the lowest is one. So write one. So forty five. This is another method. Prime, you know, FTA root. This is called FTA root. ओके जी सो वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट हम्म एक्सपोनेंट ऑफ टू इन द प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन ऑफ वन फोर फोर अगेन अ चिल्लर क्वेश्चन वेरी वेरी सैड हम्म एक्स नो एक्सपोनेंट ऑफ टू 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 द पावर फोर यस सिक्सटीन इंटू नाइन इज वन फोर्टी फोर सो so these questions you should not make mistakes at all so 144 is 2 to the power 4 16 into 3 square 16 9 is 144 are yaar understood so how much is it answer is exponent of 2 in the prime factorization of this so 4 is the answer b okay next ha this kind of a question prove that root 2 Plus root five is irrational, but it's not given. It's not said that you know root two and root five are rational, irrational. What will you do? Will you go and prove root two and root five independently? Should we write the only option in a, now this year? You will not get any MCQ, I believe. But it's always better write the you know just in case you are making a mistake. So maybe you can get some marks. So write the option and the answer. How much time does it take? Hmm. अब बताओ ये इसमें what has been instructed from your school? So have they told you to prove them independently and then go for the sum, or you assume already that root two and root five are irrational? Assume. Okay. What in what has been told in NPS, guys? Prove them independently. Are in? Is that so? So for us, they've told if it's less, if it's one or two marks, then we can assume if it's three or four marks, we have to prove them. Ooh, it will be real long then. Hmm. 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 So you know how to prove root two and root five are irrational number. We just prove that. So I will do the last part of it. So I will suggest. Ah, uh, yes. This year, so there is no four marks. But if it is really a five marker question, then obviously you can go for it. proving them independently because i would say even in three marks you can just ditch it so you can't you don't need to in my opinion uh, if it is five marker then prove root 2 separately root 5 separately and then 
understood so this is this year so there is no four marker no so that way is you are safe and anyways there are three five markers so you will be having time to do that but anyway so let's say we have to prove assuming that root 2 and root 5 are irrational so here you can start with assumption that let root 2 plus root 5 be a rational number be a rational number so you can say that then that means it can be expressed as p by q is equal to root 2 plus root 5 we can do that is it p by q is equal to root 2 by root 5 where you have to write where p and q are integers p and q are co primes do not forget to write this statement this is the soul of the entire proof and this also q not equal to 0 in rush in the rush in the hurry of completing you might miss the three points integers co primes not equal to 0 all have to be written must okay now squaring both sides you have to square in this case because uh any which any ways you will have to square uh whether you transpose one of them into this side and then do the squaring whichever way you have to square squaring both sides yes so in that case what i'll suggest is do not just blindly go for proving root 2 and root 5 so they course you please first make sure what you need squaring both sides you will get p square by q square is equal to 2 plus 5 plus 2 root 10 Isn't it? So in this case, you don't need to prove root two and root five separately. Just by proving that root ten is a prime, uh, is an irrational number, you are done. How? So you can say p square by q square minus seven is equal to two root ten. Isn't it? So that means you can say p square minus seven q square by two q square. Is equal to root ten. Is that it? What is this? Uh, I'm wondering. We need to square root two. Is it not possible? So, like, didn't understand. I don't think we need to square root two. Is equal to a minus root two by b. A minus root two by b. Okay, which is not possible. Did didn't understand? Arun, can you unmute and say? Arun, Tandon, what are you saying? Sir, um, I meant to say is that. Uh, that It's given that root two plus root five will be p by q. Mm -hmm. So if we take root five to the other side, we get p minus q root five will by q is equal to root two. So root two is being expressed uh, expressed as p by q, which is not possible. No, 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 no. Arey, there the criteria is that p and q both have to be integers. But the moment you are writing q root two, it, the integer identity is gone. Understood. so it cannot be just any p and q it has to be integer q has to be an integer these are integers so when you understood so that root will not help so what you are trying to say is this i believe what i understood is this so you are saying sir write p by q minus root 2 is equal to root 5 correct yes sir and then you write p minus root 2 q by q is equal to root 5 Yes, sir. And then you are saying now again it came into p by q form. So hence, how can it be no? Why? Because p minus root two q is not an integer, no. So, but it doesn't say that root two is irrational. We don't know that. So, as far as we are concerned, p minus root two is also an integer. Ha. Huh? So, how do you know? So hence, anyways, you are assuming that root two is also a rational number then. Sir, it doesn't say it's irrational, right? So that no, doesn't. No, but for the proof to work, we need to assume that it's irrational. No, no. What I'm so sorry, I didn't get the logic. I'm saying it doesn't say that it is not. See, it is. It is talking about root two and plus root five. It is not independently talking about root two. Is it? So how do you know that this part is an integer? So just because you don't know what you are multiplying with. So let's say if you have a x minus forty, is it an integer? If I generally give you x minus forty, you can't say because you don't know what x is. For x minus forty to be integer, x has to be an integer, hundred percent, right? X could be a complex number here, so there is no point of 
assuming that x minus 40 just because x is not given yes if i say that x is an integer then you can say x minus 40 is also an integer but if i don't say x is an integer can you assume that since it has not been given what is x so x minus 40 will be an integer shreyas get the logic yep so don't assume without the you know so there is a term in so you can't uh, uh, assume by you know losing the generality part of it so you can't just say like that right okay so there has to be a logic behind it so all of i think all of you are clear now so hence here is this makes sense this makes sense why because lhs what is lhs numerator numerator is an integer isn't it how and why because it is nothing but p square which is integer square minus 7 times another integer square so integer minus integer integer no problem and uh, denominator q square which is integer into integer square is equal to integer no problem so hence we see that the lhs is integer by integer form integer by integer form form and clearly denominator is not equal to 0 denominator is not equal to 0 that means root 10 can be expressed as a rational number root 10 is a rational number correct but you can disprove it by doing what why can't they be real what is that you didn't understand question rn why do we assume p and q to be integers why can't they be real oh my god so this is the basic understanding so what is that is a definition of rational number how do we define rational number what is the definition of a rational number why why did we require rational number for that matter we were not sure how to divide nine breads in 10 people or 10 breads in nine people right so that was the genesis right so we were not very clear if we have to uh, let's say there are 10 people or nine people claiming 10 bread breads uh, so how do we yeah so so hence that is the first question so understood so hence rational number is defined as integer by integer first of all where the denominator cannot be zero because that expression is not defined and it has to be reduced form in the reduced form that means they are must be co prime so p and q b by q where p and q are integers this is what is the definition of rational numbers right p and q have to be integers q cannot be zero and p and q gcd that is greatest common divisor or hcf of p and q is one or they must be co primes that is the definition of rational number so hence we have to if you are saying something is rational number you can define like that and that's what i started with so i assume that it's a rational number so by definition it should be like this and built my proof and eventually i got what that p square minus 7 square by 2 square is root 10 now someone is saying something uh who arjun yes arjun unmute and say sir just get root 5 to the other side and then square didn't understand once again what is that so we can say root 2 plus root 3 equals a by b like cos p by q root 2 plus root 5 yeah root 2 plus root 5 is equal to a by b yeah that's what i did p by q Uh, and then you get uh, root two to the other side. Then square. So square it. It. That's that's fine. Okay. You will get the same thing. So anyways, you have to prove either of them. Either root two is a irrational number or root ten is an irrational number. Effort is same. Understood. So what Arjun is saying is, instead of doing all this, you do this. P by Q minus root two is equal to root five and then square. Is it? That's what you're saying, Arjun. Am I right? This yes. one. Now you square it. Square it, no problem. P square by Q square plus two minus four. Uh, sorry, two root two. P by Q, correct? Is equal to fifteen. Yes, so you get root two is root two is rational, but that contradicts uh, contradicts the fact. Oh, that that's what I'm saying. So, anyways, that means you are assuming that root two is irrational, isn't it? Yes. Sir. so the the moot point was if it is a five marker question then you have to anyways prove one of them as irrational is it that's what i was saying so hence yes. now you, what will you write here you will write p square by q square minus 3 is equal to 2 root 2 p by q so you take everything on the other side you will get q by p uh by 2 okay into p square by q square minus 3 
is equal to root 2. You have to segregate these parts. So clearly this is integer operation. So this is our rational number. All are integers. Q, P, all are integers. So LHS is a, clearly LHS is a integer. But RHS is, I mean, uh, irrational number. Sorry, LHS is a rational number. Clear. It's a P by Q form. But this one, you have to any anyways prove. If it is given, then no problem. If root, if it was given that root 2, ah, that's what I'm saying. Since root 2 is not given now from here, the next step of the proof is prove that this is irrational. Root 2 is irrational. So you'll stop here, then you'll go where? You have to, let's say root 2 is equal to P by Q. Correct. So this means that root 2 is rational. So if root 2 is rational, so this entire thing can be written as, let's say, capital P by capital Q for you know, whatever P and Q are. And then again, build your proof to prove that root 2, it contradicts that root 2 is a. Yes, that, that's what I'm saying. If many schools have given different instructions that if it is a five marker, then after this, don't stop. In RS Agrawal or whatever you are mentioning, they will stop here assuming that root 2 is irrational. But if it is a 5 marker, that's what I asked you in the first place. What has been instructed to you? Because you have to follow the, you know, uh, whatever has been. So hence, in my opinion, you should, you know, stop here, leave some space and go back and solve other questions if you are running out of time. Then if, let's say if, if uh, two, three minutes are left or four five minutes are left and you're revising, come back in that free space, complete the proof and, you know, place it. Did you understand? So you can adopt these, but then you have to be very cautious that you're doing, you have to mark somewhere that I have to come back to this question. Okay. Fair enough. So this is how you should be doing it. This one. Oh, cool. Two plus root five by three is... What is the answer? Is, 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 are answer bolo? Rational. 2 plus root 5 by 3 is rational number. 2 plus root 5 by 3 is an irrational number. What if I write real number? Will it be wrong? Two plus root five by three, real number or not? Real is more correct. So every non-complex number will anyways be a real number. But here the answer expected from you is irrational number. So you have to write irrational. Okay, so you have to answer in either rational or irrational term. So clearly it is an irrational number. Why? Because sum of a rational and an irrational number is irrational. Okay, always. So let's go to the next one. This we did already. So in one set, they are asking you to find out the HCF. In the other one, they are asking you to find out the LCM. Find the LCM, same year board paper, two marks. So underlying concept, LCM HCF is A into B. Oh, my, this thing is running out of power. Oh, this. Andy. <clears throat> answer is, answer is, People are, why are people dropping off and joining in so many times? Okay. Chali, so LCM of any two number is given by A into B by HCF. So be careful while you are doing the calculations. So this is 135 into 225 divided by 45. Isn't it? So this is the thing now this is five times correct yeah so simply it is five six seven okay easy one two marks 
how many decimal places will that decimal representation of the rational number this terminate? Seven, easy, the maximum of the two. Okay, good. Next. If the LCM of two number is one of your similar questions, can you see that typically similar questions? If one of the numbers is 26, find the other. Yes, very easy. Again, in this question also. So, 182 is the LCM. And this 13 is the HCF. Divided by 26 will be the answer. So, twice 91. So, 91 is the answer. 91 is the answer. Very good. C. Now, this is this has been already given. 5 plus 2 root 7 is an irrational number where root 7 is given to me an irrational. So, you don't need to prove that. Root 7. So, hence you will say what? P by Q is equal to 2, sorry, 5 plus 2 root 7. This is what you are going to do. Isn't it? So, you will say P by Q minus 5 is equal to 2 root 7. That means you will say P minus 5Q by 2Q is equal to root 7. And you reach the same level. You reach the same level, isn't it? So this one is rational number. This one is irrational. Done. Next. Uh, find a rational number between root 2 and root 3. Find a rational number between root 2 and root 3. This is 1819, the year before. They are asking you to find a rational number between root 2 and root 3. What will be the value? Yes. Dosto. You don't need to write so it's such a big number. Simple one, yeah. Is one the right answer? One? One? Is one between root two and root three? Root 2.25? It's not like that. You just write 1.5. Rational, they are asking. Rational number. 1.5. Over. Because root two is 1.41. Root three is 1.7. So you don't need to write such long numbers. Stress. Why do you need to write such long numbers? Why are you wasting time? Find a rational number between root 2 and root 3. Find an irrational number between root 2 and root 3. If that the question is. Find an irrational. Find an irrational number between root 2 and root 3. Can anyone tell me? Irrational number between root 2 and root 3. How will you calculate that? root 2 plus root 3 by 2. Perfect. Very good. Nice. Or fourth root of 6. Uh, how? They go. Any number, if there are two numbers A and B, then A plus B by 2 will be between A and B. Right? Is it it? So hence, root 2 less than root 2 plus root 3 by 2 less than root 3. So clearly this is an irrational number only, no? So that's correct. Or if you can just generate one. So you know 1.5 is safely between 1.4 and 1.41 and 1.73. So you can write 1.50, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, like that. Non-terminating, non-repeating. You can create any, any, any number. Or another way of this thing is square root of root of 2, root of 3. That means 6 ka power 1 by 4. This is also an irrational number between root 2 and root 3. This is called geometric mean. So with people whom which we discussed AMGM. So this is geometric mean. So geometric mean is also between the two numbers. So this is also 6 power 1 by 4. 
will be between root two and root three. Irrational number. Anyways, चलिए next. Oh, similar. The most basic one. Prove that root two is an irrational number. We are not going to do this. Next. This one, same thing again. देखो वन ईयर बिफोर सेम क्वेश्चन ओनली नंबर सो यू नाउ नो यू कैन प्रेडिक्ट वॉट ऑल क्वेश्चन आर कमिंग सो इफ एच सी एफ इज सिक्स फाइंड एल सी एम ऑफ द सेम नंबर जस्ट बी केयरफुल इज द नंबर सेम मेनी टाइम्स दे विल यू नो सो यू विल यू नो यू आर सो ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट दैट यू नो ओके दिस इज द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड यूल ब्लाइंडली डू दैट एंड गॉन सो दे कैन दे कैन गिव यू थ्री थर्टी सिक्स फिफ्टी फोर एंड ईयर थ्री सिक्स थ्री थर्टी सिक्स सिक्सटी फोर एंड देन do boards are not notorious for this but then you never know pata what is the answer so in hence the answer is 336 into 54 right divided by 6 so 6 into 9 right so 9 Three zero two four is the answer. Okay, good. Next, same. देखो, same thing. Another previous year, same question, same as in same pattern. Two plus five root three is an irrational number. What will you do? So many times you would have done this by now. So p by q is equal to two plus five root three. So there it was five plus two root three. Now they are saying two plus five root three. Amazing. So p by q. Minus two is equal to five root three. So p minus two q by five q is equal to root three. So in three step you again land up in the same this thing. So this is integer by integer form. This is irrational number. So this is r n. This is i n. So not possible. Mm, so this is the basic of this one. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. Yeah, what up? find after how many places of decimal the decimal form of the number will terminate bolo what is the answer everyone please 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 aditi says 4 ah no who says 4 Four, ah. Huh? What is the answer? No, yar. How are you saying four? Bro, how are you saying four and all? Oh, how, how, how? Are the the uh, this thing is divided by nine? No, so it has to be only two and five. There is no scope of three. Only two and five should be there. Understood. So, it is a non-terminating. Oh, acha ha. That is correct. Ha. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, Aditi. My bad. Yeah. My totally bad. I I did not see twenty-seven. Are fantastic. Yeah. Good. Good catch. Yes, yes, yes. Twenty-seven is yes. But let's say if it was one upon. So I was thinking of one upon. Yes. Very good. Yes, four. Correct. 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 Good. Good. Good uh, level of. concentration nice closing close you will be rewarded for this good so express 429 as a product of its prime factors is it a prime number so this is one marker again is it a prime number 429 clearly no it gets divided by 3 so what are the factors 429 Four twenty nine is three times for sure. So three and uh, what is this? Three into one four three. So one four three into three and one four three itself is going by eleven. So this is three into eleven into thirteen. Three into eleven into thirteen. 
परफेक्ट कूल चलिए सो नेक्स्ट वन हाँ दिस इज अर्ड प्रॉब्लम यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो On a morning walk, three persons step out together, and their steps measure thirty, thirty-six, forty centimeter respectively. What is the minimum distance each should walk so that each can cover the same distance in complete steps? So, what is the minimum distance each should walk so that each can cover the same distance in complete steps? so basically they are asking you to find out what lcm of these three numbers so that they can complete they can complete that distance in integral steps isn't it so lcm of 30 36 and 40 in centimeter hmm so 30 is equal to Three two into three into five. Thirty six is equal to two square into three square. And for my sake, I will also write five to the power zero. Okay, forty. Forty is two eight two to the power three into three to the power zero into five to the power one. So prime factorization. So hence LCM is write all. So two into three into five. And the highest power. So highest power is three for two. Three ka highest power is two. Five ka highest power is one. Okay, those. So forty into nine, three sixty centimeter. So after three sixty centimeter, they would have. Uh, so but you have to find out minimum distance each should walk. Huh? So three sixty each should walk. So be careful if they are asking minimum number of steps. Each should take two. So, how many number of steps first person will take? Twelve steps. The second person will take ten steps, and the third will take fourteen. So, nine steps. So, in twelve steps, ten steps, and nine steps together, they will meet. So, just be careful if they are asking about that. Next, and similar another type of word problem. Find the largest numbers which, on dividing twelve fifty one nine three seven seven one five six two eight, leaves remainder one two and three respectively. I don't think they will ask you because it involves again that lemma. But you never know. So be prepared. So how do you solve? Find the largest numbers which, on dividing this, this, and this, leaves remainder one two and three. so basically in such questions so the largest number is x let's say okay so 1251 is equal to x into let's say q1 plus 1 so 1 is the remainder and uh, second is 9377 and hence i said this is lemma question so x is the same then next quotient is 2 and the remainder is 2 And one five six three sorry six two eight two eight is equal to x into another quotient plus three, right? So hence, what will you get? One two five zero is equal to x into q one. Then nine three seven five is equal to x into q two, and One five six two five is equal to x into q three. So basically, they are asking you to find out the highest x, which is nothing but HCF of all three. HCF of these three numbers: one two five zero, one nine three seven five, and one five six two five. Okay, so one two five zero appears to be easily five cube into. So five to the power four. Ah, so it is one twenty five into ten. So six twenty five into two. So that is five to the power four into. Two. This is one two five zero. What about nine three seven five? So you can do the, you know, so nine three seven five again. It definitely goes by twenty five. So let us write like this: twenty five into twenty five threes are seventy five. 
and uh, 18, so 187. So 7s are uh, 87, right? So wait a minute. Uh, 187. So 187, matlab 12, 125. So into 5. So this is again, it will go by 25 again. So 25 into 25 into, this is one and uh, 125, 15. So this is the thing. Okay, those, so clearly you can see some trend coming in. So large numbers, be very, very careful. So 625 definitely is going to be divided by six, one, five, six, two, five. Again, so one, five, six, two, five. It will clearly go by 25. So. 25, six times, so I'll write it here, six times 150, so 62, matlab two, and 125 is, ah, so 625 into 625, this number is. Fair enough, so you got enough of fodder now. So this is five to the power four into two. This one is five to the power, how much? Two, two, and one, five into three. And this one, this is five to the power four and two, six. Correct. So the HCF is 5 to the power 4. 625. So this is the answer. Okay, those. So this is what? 625. I hope everyone is getting the same answer. Did you get the same answer, guys? 625. Yeah, 625. Yep. Bolo. Correct. You can check also. Yeah, Bolo, any, any doubt? Anything, any problem? Dosto, hello. E5 to the power 5 is 625 into 5. Ah, correct only. Okay. Yeah, next question. Ah, this is another one marker. This is two years prior to 1718, so 2018 board. What is the HCF of smallest prime number and the smallest composite number? Answer is hmm? only one answer. Yes, two. Right? 2 is the answer. What is the smallest prime number? 2. What is the smallest composite number? 4. So, smallest prime. Smallest composite. Don't say 1 is composite number. Many people make this mistake. Smallest composite 4. So, HCF of 2 and 4. Okay. This is again same thing. Just one year before, and these are all actual board paper. Given that root two is an irrational number, they have only changed three co five plus. We had seen what? Let me show you this. They go two plus five root three here, and here five plus three root two. Numbers changed five, but root two wala we have done. Or pele or pele two plus root three. They go five, and this is root seven. Um, so they have every year this kind of a question is coming somewhere ah, they go, 2 minus root 3 mm -hmm. so every year this is typical of there will be one, one question for sure okay yeah now this find HCF and LCM of and verify so you have to verify also Find HCF and LCM of 404 and 96 and verify. So LCM of 404. So thankfully this is a good number. 2 square into 101 and 96 is 2 square into 49 that is 7 square. 101 is a prime number. So what is the HCF? 
HCF is clearly four. What is LCM? Very big number. LCM will be four into forty nine into one zero one. Is it it? Yes or no? Or four zero four into ninety six by four. So one zero one into ninety six. Hmm. Sorry. Uh. Ah. Huh? Aniket Gupta, what happened? Four zero four is that, na? What problem? Sir, ninety six. It, it's uh, two oh. to the power five into three. Ah, right, 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 right. I I thought ninety eight. I see. Yes, I'm wrong. Yeah, there. What is it now? Yeah. Two to the power five into not this p. Correct. Good, good, good. Thanks. So, what to change? Okay, sir. Mahal. So now, what is HCF? Oh, HCF still is two to the power four. HCF is still two to the power four. LCM is oh sorry two to the power two. LCM will be LCM will be two to the power five into one not one into three. है ना अच्छे से लिख लो इसको do not overwrite यार you cut it and then hmm ठीक है दोस्त is this the LCM correct okay so multiply this so three not three and um, what is this thirty two into three ninety six into Uh, one not one. Right. So nine six nine six. Is it? So ninety six and ninety six zero zero. So nine six nine six. ठीक है तो बोलो Okay, clear. So this is so what type we saw. So hence, if you summarize, you will be getting questions on terminal decimal, terminal, the terminating. Sorry, why I was saying like that. Terminating, terminating decimal. One one marker, two marker maximum, one or two marker. So you know maximum of the two. So they will ask you question of in terms of which all are having terminating decimal or after how many digits they will terminate questions like that. This is one type of question. This is on fundamental theorem of arithmetic, uh, and then then will questions on LCM HCF, LCM into HCF is equal to A into B. Questions are on these. Third is proving that prove that root P. And combination, whatever combinations they are given, combination are irrational. These are the three types of question you are going to get. This will be little higher mark. So root p is like where p is a prime. So hence questions like root two plus five root or root two plus five or root two minus root seven, all that. You know combination of that. Right, so this will attract, say, let's say three to five marks. There is no four marker, so three to five marker. This will be around one to two marks, and this also will be around one to two marks. So you can expect this in the board paper. Okay, now this is how see smallest prime, smallest composite. This is how they have done. So HCF of two four is two, and they have written also HCF of the smallest prime, smallest composite is two. You don't need to write in one marker. So you can just yeah. Now, given root two is irrational, prove that five two prove five plus root two is irrational. So let me just yeah, this is how they have done it. Hmm. So let us assume five plus root five root three is irrational. So it is in the form a by b or b by q, where the condition has to be mentioned. A by b belongs to Z. Either you can write like this: b is not equal to zero, and it's CF a and b is equal to one. So you can write in words also that a and b are positive. A and b are integers. Or p and q are integers. Q not equal to zero, 
and PNQ are co prime. You have to mention that. If you don't mention this statement, then you will lose marks. Now, 5 plus root, same thing which we did, transposing, and this shows that root 2 is rational. A minus 5b and 3b are integers, but we know that root 2 is irrational. This contradicts our assumption that 5 plus 3 root 3 is rational. So, hence, 5 plus 3 root 3 root 2 is irrational, hence, proved. This is what? Two marks. All this effort for two marks. Okay, this is for a three marker. Uh, 404 and 96 question to find HCF and LCM. So you please do whichever way you are most comfortable. So let's say this is branch tree structure you want to do, please do that. Uh, I should have also done this because this will eliminate errors. So don't try to do it in mind like what I was trying to do, right? Uh, isn't integer represented with I? No, integers are in, integers are represented by the set Z. Z, Z is Zellen, something like that. You will see that after nine group, it is German, this thing for count, you know, uh, integers. So hence Z comes from the German word. So rational, yeah, complex numbers are given by letter capital C, the set, the set of. So natural numbers is N. Whole numbers we generally do not say, we say non-negative integers. Then integers are Z. Then uh, rational numbers for Q, irrational number for I, and real numbers R and complex number C. These are the usual notations for different sets of numbers. Yes, Z is taken as complex number inside, like let Z be a complex number. So for that matter, we take even Q as an integer, isn't it? So that these are normal conventions. Okay, so 404, 2 square into 7 into 30, 96 is 2 to 5, 5 into 3. HCF is greatest common factor, 2 square is 4. LCM all factors, so least power. So like that, 96, 96. Product of two numbers, Achha, this verification part you want to do. So product of two numbers, 96 into 404. Product of HCM into LCM is same amount. So hence HCF, LCM is product of two numbers. So in verification, don't try to copy the same number. Maybe you would have made some mistake here. So hence, uh, try to really verify because it will act as a check also for your calculations. So that's how you have to do. Perfect. So we now come to the closure of uh, the revision program for mathematics. So we have touched upon all the topics. I think uh, if anything is we have have we have we not touched anything so that we can we have some time we can do that. Else, I think most of I think every every topic we have touched upon all the PPTs and the videos will be available as I told you 50% more than 50% of them are already available the rest of them we will edit and put it on the web so you can now your strategy ideally should be to revise in a systematic manner from here on till you write your boards so that will give you a good you know that will keep you in touch with the topics Parallelly, do not do only this till boards because that will be a lot of wastage of time. So hence, in my opinion, you should all, yesterday was KBY exam. I don't know if you knew anything, anyone, anyone of you could, you know, uh, get to see the type of questions and all. So it will be a good target. Next target should be that. Whether you want to get into IAC or not, preparing for KBY gives you a good, good boost or, you know, let's say acceleration towards the next two years. So when you have an objective in mind, it becomes, you know, much helpful. So hence now you are kind of done. You know, anyways, in the month of February, you'll be writing another set of pre-boards. So that will give you a good, you know, what do you say? Confidence and you will eventually become bored. So hence, it, instead of that happening, you start with next goal, start working on it. Anyone requires any assistance, Apart from this also, please touch base with me individually. I'll help you. And you guys can start on that journey. So with those words, I think I can leave you early today. If anyone has any doubt or any question regarding boards or regarding preparation for anything, you can ask now. So um, you can discuss those next steps. Bolo, anything? Yes, anyone? Anyone wants to discuss anything? I hope these, uh, uh, how are these classes guys? So how did you find them? So all the revision classes, which we did, because we are anyways planning to repeat it for multiple number of batches again. So not maybe 
not if not this year next year so what's your take so did did these classes help you was it good or um, what was your this thing so i would like to hear from you you can just drop in a text indi individually to me as well or if you want to share in the common chat box so i i get to know how was how was your this thing so yes anyone wants to share his or her uh, you can write to me so do let me know so how did you feel about these classes and what else can be done so that your performance in the board exams can be improved so do let me know okay guys uh, with those words i think any if you any one of you has any other doubt you can just ask me refreshed right okay great thanks thanks arun for those words and uh, so hence uh, i would request all of you to go go these go through these once again so you can just uh, revise the concepts now so fair enough thanks for all your time and uh, my best wishes to all of you and uh, if you are you know we'll try to again arrange anyways you know that we are we will be back with our next goal so hence that will be there and any other assistance you want me, me to assist let me know okay thanks thanks anushka for those words thank you bye bye guys take care and all the best from my side bye bye